Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about else statements and else if statements in Java through the example of a choose your own adventure game. A quick little recap, again, we're stuck in a dungeon and we're facing two doors. First door is a losing door, second door is a winning door. And over there I have the code from the last video executing that whole process. This works fine and all, but honestly, it's pretty boring. I think most of the time with choose your own adventure games, you're given more than two options. I think you're given at least three, sometimes even 10 options to choose from. So I kind of want to edit that in my code to make a more fun game to play. So let me very quickly just add two more doors to choose from, and then I'll be right back. All right, cool. I just added two more doors and I'm going to make both of them losing doors because again I want this to be a fun game to play and it's not going to be fun if it's going to be easy to win. So let's code this out. Now there's a couple ways that we can code this out. The first being yes we could just write two more if statements checking if I pick door three or four but I personally don't like that idea because as a programmer I am incredibly lazy. <laughs> I only want to do something if it's very fast and it's very efficient and I'm not going to write out two more if statements because again sometimes there's going to be 10 options to choose from maybe even a hundred and I'm not going to write that many if statements out because again I am lazy. So let me show you a faster way to do that using else statements and else if statements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I noticed that with all my doors, there's only one door in which I win the game. Every other door has the same outcome, i.e. losing the game. So I'm going to keep this first if statement where I check if the door I picked is a winning door. And I'm going to edit this other statement over here so that it mirrors every other outcome. So instead of saying L, uh, if door is equal to num door number one, I'm just going to say else. Now, what is that doing? So an else statement is only going to be executed if the if statement above it was not met, if the condition in the if statement was not met. So that means that I cannot have an else statement on my own. That red squiggly line is the executor telling me, or excuse me, the editor telling me that something's wrong with your code. There's an else statement without an if statement. So that's the first thing to note. So how this is going to work is it's going to check the first if statement. If that statement is met, it's going to run everything in this block of code, and then it's going to skip the else statement. It's not going to run it. However, if the door I picked is not equal to door number two, it's going to print this out no matter what. So let's see how that looks like with the terminal. So let me run this code, and let me first pick door number two. Just to show you that it does work. <laughs> so there we go. I won the game. You know? <laughs> and then I'm going to clear that. And now I'm going to pick door number four, which according to my visual aid is a losing door. And I lost the game. However, again, just to be weary of, this else statement is going to run no matter what under the pretense that the if statement is not met. So that can be a little dangerous and let me show you why. So if I pick door negative 99 and then I run this, as you can see, I still lost the game even though in my mind, I should be printing out something along the lines of, you know, you did not pick a valid door or something because there is no, no door number 99. That doesn't really, makes sense. So I want to fix my code a little bit so that it first checks if I won the game. If I didn't pick door number two, it's then going to check that is my door even a valid door? And if it's not a valid door, I'm going to print out, um, you did not pick a valid door. There we go. So there we go. Um, let's add one more block of code in between the if and the else statement to check that. So I'm going to write an else if statement. That's what it looks like. So an else if statement you can think of as a hybrid between the two statements. What does that mean? So just like an else statement, it's 
only going to run if the if statement above it was not met. So that also means that you cannot have an else if statement without an if statement above it. However, just like an if statement, it's still going to have a conditional. So I want my conditional to be that my door is greater than zero. I want the door I pick to be greater than zero. So again, if the if statement above it was not met, it's going to print, it's going to check this else if statement. If it was met, it's going to skip over both else statements. So now, again, let me actually add some chunks of code into my else if statement, just so something will actually happen. <laughs> so if the door I picked is not equal to door number two, but it is greater than zero, it means I picked a losing door and I lost the game. So I'm going to code that. You lose. Just like that. So let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to pick door number two so that we can see what happens. Bring this up a bit. There we go. Perfect. Run that. I won the game and nothing else was printed because the first if statement was met. So all the other else statements or else if statements are going to be skipped over. And then I'm going to pick door number, let's say three. And then run that. And I lost the game. Perfect. Well, not perfect because I want to win, but <laughs> perfect because it's doing what I want it to. And let's say I pick door negative three. Let's see what will happen. I did not pick a valid door. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching and happy coding.